So welcome everybody, uh, and uh, as well sure as you know, that's been it's been some time. Let me just get this going. Perfect. So yeah, welcome everybody, and uh, honestly, in this training session, I swear on everything. If there's one training session that I could put together that literally you could take to the doors in your door knocking career, it's this training session. And the reason why is because, as you guys know, we've already been out knocking. What's the number one thing you always get told at the doors? Not interested, okay? And I'm gonna break into the details as to why you're getting it and how you can overcome it. Because in my early career, and just to kind of give you a little bit of background about me, just uh, for you guys who don't know a little bit about myself, you know, when I got started in this type of industry, first of all, I graduated from business and marketing, and uh, it was my major, and I, at the first, was like, you know, when I heard about this, you know, actually going out, knocking on doors, to me, I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. Would I want to leave a corporate uh, job to come to something where it's knocking on doors and, you know, where's the professionalism in that? Where's the end of it? Uh, and to me, it was like, you know what, that's something that I'm not going to do. And uh, I chose not to, even though I was in a situation where I was actually working at Northgate Industries, if anybody has heard of that, uh, in, in, a, in the corporate environment. But unfortunately, it wasn't making me happy and fulfilled. So number one, I didn't like the fact that I was just working in an office, you know, nine to five, and no matter how hard I worked, that was it. It was like, I go in, I do the same thing over and over again, and it's goodbye. It's not challenging. It was not challenging enough for me. The money, the pay was not somewhere where it would make me happy. You know, I myself was making you know, 30, $32,000 a year over there, and that was the start, and they said after your first year, you would actually make more money, and yada, 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 you grow in the company. And uh, to me, I was like, you know what, that sounds cool. So I stuck in, believe it or not, all the way till the end of the year. And throughout the year, I had my doubts. And by the way, at this time, I was always a job hopper. So if there was uh, anybody in here a job hopper, anybody in here typically hop jobs, even hops uh, state uh, prov provinces, right, and cities. Uh, but, uh, you know, myself, that's, that's, it's a good thing. I'll be honest with you. People who are job hoppers, just so you know, that is a good thing. Who hop for the right reason. See, for me, I didn't hop just because I wanted to, you know, leave and go and get something else because, you know, this sucked. It was mainly because I wasn't fulfilled and happy at where I currently was, and it didn't also fulfill my goals. If I were to progress and move forward within this company, that company, whatever it was that I was doing, it was not going to get me ultimate happiness to where I was going to, you know, my goals and what I wanted to accomplish. At a really young age, I wanted to be wealthy. That's something that I wanted. I wanted to create wealth, okay? And uh, as such, uh, my parents, I came from a wealthy background where my parents were, were wealthy. But unfortunately, uh, due to a, an early divorce that they had, we lost everything. Uh, and, you know, we used to, I used to go to St. Catharines, just not too far from here, well, near Kingsway, um, St. Catharines School. And my dad used to come into to our, our school. And literally, every time we'd want to go and uh, uh, out for lunch, he would be like, well, bring your friends. Like, let's go. And money was not an issue. You can just, you know, bring your friends, do whatever. And he always wanted me to socially engage with other people so that, uh, you know, we can go out and I, I can be like this social person. That's one thing I really respect about both my parents, my mom and my dad, was they really taught me to be very social with other people and also to give back. So I love that. But what happened was once the divorce actually came through, and it's a mess, I'll tell you, uh, unfortunately, I lost it all. We lost it all. And I was like this young kid who's looking up at, you know, my parents and, whoa, wait a second, I can no longer take my friends out. And, you know, we used to own a restaurant as well. Back when, you know, Pac-Man and Galaga and all those arcade games where you sit side by side and you put quarters in the side, we actually owned one of those big restaurants downtown uh, to where people would come in. And then obviously after that divorce, it all went, like literally out the window. So I wanted to create that back, what I already had a taste of. So what the, the, the idea, the reason why I tell this story is for somebody who's already tasted a little bit of the AKA good life, right? The Canadian dream, the American dream, anybody who's tasted a little bit of it normally and actually likes that type of lifestyle, okay? You typically are craving and fighting to try and get that, okay? If you haven't and you want it, trust me, study it. Study what it means to be wealthy and successful. Uh, you know, a lot of people think just everybody who's wealthy, they're greedy, they're selfish, they just like nice cars, they don't help people out. That's not true. Um, it's not true. Everybody's different. 
Okay, what you do, you personally do with your wealth. Me, I enjoy teaching. That's one of my things in life. My passions in life is teaching things that I've mastered that I absolutely love. And it so happens to be one of the things that I struggled with when I first got started, which was door-to-door -door sales. So jumping back into it, uh, my friend told me about it. He said, Paul, you probably do better than I would at this job. And what it is is, you know, we go around, we talk to people door-to-door, yada-yada. And, uh, you know, you can actually do pretty decent. And I got so fed up and, and frustrated with that place over there. A couple things happened, but another thing that was at the end of my year that I was done, my raise was $1,500 every single year. They gave me a $1,500 raise. If you think of that, what, is that a vacation a year? You know, I'm still not even happy with the amount of money I'm making. In one year, I only got a $1,500 raise. And by the way, they were like, Paul, everybody loves you. You talk, you get your work done on time. So you got the maximum raise, congratulations. To me, I was like, that's not gonna get my goals. So thankfully, I was already in a situation that wasn't making me happy, and I decided I had to go and chase something else. So, my friend who brought me into this, he basically told me that, hey, if you like a challenge, I, for me, I play hockey, ice hockey, ball hockey. If you like a challenge, this is the most challenging job, but more, important, more importantly, it's very rewarding. And when I say challenging, it's not hard, it's not easy, but you have to challenge yourself mentally. You have to mainly challenge yourself mentally. You're gonna get and acquire the skills at this job that are gonna take you in your personal life to that next level, I promise you. Once you learn to actually take yourself from where you're at right now and better yourself, self-improve yourself, you will get stronger and become a stronger person. You just can't, you gotta follow the footsteps. Remember, if somebody has already created success, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about mine, only to enlighten you to say, hey, if this person did it, this clown did it who's standing up here, so can you. Because I promise you guys, I am not a smart person. I, I, I say that to everybody. I am not a smart person, but the one thing I have over almost anybody I know is I don't quit. I don't. It frustrates me. It eats me. It kills me to learn something. I just don't give up. I don't. Uh, and it's kind of like that Buster Douglas story in Mike Tyson, as you guys know. Uh, I don't know if you guys know the story, but pretty much I'll just in a, sum it up. Where Buster Douglas, his mom actually passed away, and uh, before he was he was actually going to fight Mike Tyson, and uh, you know he really wanted to prove and show her that he was able to actually beat Mike Tyson. And what happened was she passed away uh, before the fight, and he was really upset and down. And dang it, I really wanted to show her and prove to her, but. When, Mike, when, when Buster Douglas actually got in this, this uh, ring, and he was actually fighting Tyson, if you guys know the fight or heard about the fight or seen the fight, yeah, you'll get to know that he was getting pounded, he was getting beaten, he was getting defeated. And by the way, wasn't Mike Tyson undefeated at that time? He was unstoppable. You couldn't fight and destroy and touch this guy. So anyways, Buster Douglas is stepping there and he literally gets clocked so hard to where he's actually on the ground and he's done. He's like, I'm gonna quit, I'm done, I'm giving up but he remembered that voice inside of his mind about his mom, how he wanted to actually ultimately, okay, prove to his mom that he can actually do this and accomplish this and beat this biggest task of his life that he ever wanted to accomplish. And that's what drove him to get up off the ground and the end of the fight ended with Buster Douglas winning. Winning the fight to when he was gonna throw in the towel, okay? We don't get knocked by Mike Tyson every single day at this job physically. And when I look back at that, I say, we come up with them, including myself, we come up with all these excuses on the door. Oh, this person tell me not interested. Oh, that person's doing this and this person's doing that. Are you Buster Douglas that got knocked the F out by Mike Tyson and now you're, you did, you know, you're not in that same situation. So we really have a simple, not easy, not hard job. All we gotta do is learn the process and master it. And by the way, if you didn't take any training from anybody who's been successful at this, you would master it under one condition. What do you think that one condition would be that you would guarantee success at this job? If you didn't learn it didn't, from anybody else, what would you have to do in order to guarantee that you'd become successful at this? Because anybody can. It doesn't matter age, it doesn't matter sex, it doesn't matter anything that, any limiting belief that people will come up with. What do you think would be the number one thing you need to do in order to succeed? And give you a hint, I told you I'm very good at it. That's probably my best trait. Perseverance, not quitting. never quitting. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. I wanted to quit, I wanted to throw the towel. I was actually, and I, I say this proudly as a man because I know it's pretty, uh, you know, as a, to, to bites our ego. I don't cry, I cried maybe two times, two or three times in my life. I cried one time 
uh, literally when my parents got divorced at a really young age, but a second time I actually cried was about two to three months into knocking on doors. I wanted this success and this so freaking bad. I literally went to a field, I was like bawling my eyes out, but I, I called my manager, he's like, dude, you're like doing decent, you can only get better, what's wrong, what's going on? I'm like, wanted success so bad. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say, it. now I pushed through, okay? And I promise you, at first, it seemed like it was gonna be magic. It seemed like you needed to make magic in order to get sales consistently. And that's what you guys are going through, I know it. You feel like, okay, well, I mean, there's the majority of people not interested in what they're saying, right? And because they're not interested, I mean, I just gotta keep going through to find that person who somewhat allows and lets me to communicate a little bit further, I get in the house and I close one sale, two sales a week. Most people are stuck at that one sale, two sales a week, okay? I'm gonna teach you guys how to ethically sell because you're gonna understand why you're getting not interested and what you can do to overcome it, okay? It's no lies, no trickery. People always tell me, and by the way, just so you know a little bit about me now, I train thousands of people all over the world exactly how to master this job, okay? Um, and it's nothing that's magical, it's just understanding what's going on inside your guys' mind, taking control of your mental mindset, because that's very important, understanding why your customers are rejecting you, and what you can do ethically to overcome it. That's it. That's it. There's no magic to it. Sometimes though, uh, every, well, every time there's, everybody's in a different situation. What I need to better myself and what you need to better yourself at the doors or even in your life and what you need is all different. So I may need to work on a couple things in my, in, 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 uh, in my motivation, my excitement, but maybe I'm a good uh, communicator and a talker. Meanwhile, the other people, on the other side, people are not scared or fearful at the doors. They don't fear that. So that's not something they really need to work on. They can knock at a door and, hey, I don't care if somebody opens a door or doesn't, says get off my property or whatever. That doesn't fear me. What I you know, lack is unfortunately communication skills. People always say, dude, you sound weird. Change your way you talk. Okay? So everybody has a completely different issue that they're going through. And believe me, I know them all, which is very simple. But once you start tweaking and personally developing each and every individual, each and every one of you, you will ultimately find that success. How do you get that? You keep working at it. And ultimately, you don't quit. Okay? You have to work at yourself every single day. And I promise you, if you're not going to do that, you're going to be depressed anyways in your own lives. So use this as literally a tool, a resource that you can take to better yourself. So ultimately, whatever your end game is, and that's where I'm gonna end off on uh, at the end of this presentation, but whatever your end game is, whatever you ultimately want to accomplish, that this is gonna be that stepping stone to take you to there, okay? Perhaps you wanna be a little bit more of an extrovert. I was an introvert before I started this job. I can barely talk, barely communicate. Honestly, I was nervous. I told you guys the stories about a Lebanese friend of mine here in the mall who actually broke me out of my, my, my thoughts of what basically I was and what y'all get into in other trainings. But, not interested. So that's a little bit about me. Now, myself, a little bit more now into this job. So when I actually got started, I was okay. Didn't do the best, didn't do the worst. Um, I was okay. I would keep pushing and pushing and pushing. I would talk and talk and talk. I outworked my competition, my other people in my office, and that's the reason why I was a, at least a little consistent. So I'd get one sale a day, one sale every other day to start my first two to three months. Because I, no matter what, would put in eight to nine to 12 hours a day. And ultimately, if you talked enough people, you're gonna get a sale, okay? That is not sustainable long-term. That's not what I teach. I teach you do that in the beginning so you acquire the skill set that you need in order to take yourself to getting comfortable with this so you can increase your closing ratio from one to five, sorry, from one to 50, down to one to 25, one to 10, one to three, okay? Ultimately, what does it take in order to get you to closing one in every three to five homeowners? Being comfortable, confident, and knowing the process. Being comfortable with that process. Being not afraid to you know, ask somebody in the proper way to say, oh, I totally understand you're, you're not interested in what I have to offer. I totally understand that, why would you be? Because in the back of your head, I'm gonna go through the details as to why they're not interested. You know. So it's you know what to do and how to handle the situation in the process. Okay? So I went on to literally growing after I learned and mastered this. Offices in multiple states, just so you know. Uh, and uh, we, I grew literally offices from 100 to 200 to 300 plus uh, sales reps. Where I'm traveling, training, and teaching. And to date, 
I'm proud to say we actually broke now over 10,000 sales reps all over the world that I train and teach on a daily basis. Okay, and uh, so as as such, I'm saying that it, it literally every single day I'm very passionate about this because I myself and my wife we slept on an air mattress when we first got started. Uh, and you know, I was struggling. Um, I didn't have money. I was living with family too. Um, I went through all these different types of things, but I knew it was only going to be like that for a short period of time. And of all people, I'm the one person who wants it now. I always say that I hate waiting. If anybody's like that, where you hate waiting, you want it now. Uh, you know, I see you're probably laughing, you're chuckling, and maybe you. Uh, that that's me to a T. I hate waiting. I'm so impatient. I've been learning though uh, how to actually be a little bit more patient. And one thing I noticed that. If I'm not going to be patient, if I'm going to be very impatient, I'm going to have nothing at all. Because you're always trying to run and find the next best thing that's going to go ahead and do this and do that. And then ultimately, at the end of the day, you don't have anything. Okay? So patience is key. So let's talk now, jump on into a little bit about training. Not interested. Why in God's earth do you think somebody would tell you not interested? And I'm going to give you a couple of reasons as to why. But before I do, I want to truthfully ask each and every one of you, reach inside, deep within yourself, your soul, your body, your mind, your spirit. Do you really believe, when you're knocking, say, a hundred doors, okay? You're talking to a hundred people, and uh, you get rejected, and literally 90% of them, let's just say, so 90 out of them, 90% of them tell you, yeah, man, I'm just not interested. Within the first, like, 30 seconds, 7 seconds, 10 seconds, 1 minute, tell you not interested. Do you really believe that 90% of the people are not interested in what you have to offer? Anybody? They just don't care what you have to offer, or they okay. don't really smoke, want to talk smoke to you. Screen. Okay, smoke screen, they don't care what you have to offer just because it's random. Yeah, the truthful answer, and please, this is something important you guys need to understand. They, it's not that they're not interested, they're just not interested yet, okay? They're just not interested yet, and why? Whose job, whose duty is it to get them interested? Ours, that's right. It's our duty to figure out if we can get them interested. But, knock, 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 okay? When you knock on a door, think about this. Have you ever had anybody knock on your door and say yes if you did? Anybody? Nobody? Yes? Let's get a little louder. Yes? Yes, yep. yes, yes, yep. yes. Okay, let's get some life in you guys. Now, you've had somebody knock on your door. Knock, knock, knock. What goes through your mind, and you can shout it out, what goes through your mind when somebody knocks on your door? Sales guy. Okay, that's one thing. Sales guy. Do you want to talk to some random sales guy, especially when you're, you know, uh, playing a game, NHL 16, which we still have to play, by the way? Uh, do you want to talk to that random guy? Okay, go ahead. Um, I, I try to get rid of him. Trying to get rid of him? Okay. Because it's just what you want to do, because you don't want to be bothered? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Random stuff? I'm not the homeowners. You're not the homeowner, so you know, even if they came through and they needed to do something, I just don't want to deal with it yourself. That was the salesman. Oh. I was like, oh no, we're not interested. Just not interested. Okay. So you guys do it as well. Everybody does it. In order for you to overcome it, any problem. Is it a problem if you're knocking on doors? Yes or no? Is it a problem? Is it a problem if you knock on a door and somebody tells you not interested? Is it a problem for you guys? Is it an issue? Would you rather them say, yeah, absolutely, or would you rather them say, no, not interested? Um, what would you rather them say? You'd rather them say not interested? Yeah. I'd rather them say, yeah, absolutely, come on well, in, give me a deal. It is the best case scenario, but I'm asking you a question. What would you rather them say? Of course, yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely, right? So we yeah. want them to say, yes, absolutely. So them saying not interested is a problem. And guess what? Who in here had, has problems in their life? Anybody? You guys have problems? Okay, we have problems in our lives. What do you do with the problems in your life? Do you solve them? Or do you just let them, put them, tuck them, and say, you know what, they're gonna solve on their own? Or run away? Because I know a lot of friends of mine who have problems, and they run away from it, and they run away from it until the shit pile piles up so big that eventually they're like, oh, effing, oh my, and they're done, they're stuck in a depression. Trust me, I've been there. And I promise you on a day-to-day -day basis, Every single person has these issues, has these problems. What's up, brother? How are you? Everybody has these issues, has these problems, and what we do with those problems, how we overcome them and fix them, is what's gonna ultimately determine whether or not in your own personal lives you're gonna be successful. And jumping back into this, not interested is a problem. But guess what? Do problems have solutions? They do. So, 
what was, and this is important, not interested is a problem, who cares, we understand it's a part of the job. The reason why we get paid so well as door knockers and the number one reason why people quit is because they can't handle the rejection because not interested is that. And if we didn't have not interested and everybody said yes, we would not even be able to make the great money we make knocking on doors. So we need to take a look and shift our mindset on not interested is the best freaking darn thing that ever happened to us as door knockers. And once we start shifting our focus into, you know what, not interested, bring it. Because I know it's an excuse. That's all it is. Not interested is just an excuse. We just said, we just don't want to deal with it. We just don't want to be with it. We just don't want to. So we're not interested. them they don't know who you are they don't like you they don't trust you and when I say they don't like you it's not that they dislike you but they, they, they haven't built a relationship up enough with you to truly like you you can like somebody you meet at the first time but the more you talk to them the more you engage with them then you start learning a couple of things about them and you build that like factor now a lot of salespeople struggle with building likability this is true a lot of people they're just like awkward they're they, they need to learn how to be likable, more likable, more presentable, okay? This is one thing that I may not struggle with, that other people may, but then you may have another trait that you're not struggling with that I am. Just accept it, but don't accept it and not do anything about it. If you feel that other people are not trusting you or liking you at the door, hey, that's another issue, another problem you need to fix. The more issues you have, the more issues you identify, you just attach and uh, uh, and, and patch up the solution to that problem and ultimately that's what makes you very successful. Every single person, no matter what you want to accomplish, understand that there's an issue, there's a problem, overcome that issue, overcome that problem, hence you actually have that solution. You fix the problem. So, not interested, they don't want to deal with you, they don't know what it is you're doing and why you're doing it, what it would ultimately mean for them. Now in this case we're talking about home automation and home security. So. Do you guys know your, your, your features of the home security and home automation? Do you know it? Do you know every single feature that the home security, home automation uh, business has, uh, industry has to offer? Like your products and services. Do you guys know all of it? Can you comfortably say you know all of it? Yes? Yeah? Okay. So if you know all of it, how good are you at presenting it? How good are you at buying time to present it as well are things that we need to actually work on. Okay, so not interested. Of course, they're not interested. Features. Give me some features of the of the security system. Just shout out a couple. What are some of the features that you when you're what you have to offer to your customer? Sky what belt. can your system do? What's that? Sky belt. Sky belt. Sir. Sky belt. Sky belt. Okay, that's one. What's another one? Thermostat. The the which? Thermostat. Thermostat. Okay. Thermostat. Door sensors. Smoke Door sensors. Smoke Door sensors. Smoke sensors. Um, thermostat. Yeah. Um, door locks. Door locks. I don't know. Yard sign, keypads, okay. Two-way voice. Two-way voice, cell units, okay. So features, these are your features. All your features are your ammunition, okay. So you need to understand features are your ammunition. But what good is your ammunition if it's in a box and it's closed? What good is that? Do you need to learn how to use that ammunition to hit your target? Mr. Hunter here, I still remember that, Charles. But if you actually, of course he'd be the hunter, right? No <laughs> comment. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna let go of that. Okay, um, but uh, what good is that ammunition if you don't know how to use it? Hence comes in the benefits of that actual feature, okay? And that's how you actually use your ammunition, okay? You need to learn how can somebody ultimately benefit from each of those actual features that you have. And that's another training of its own. I'm not gonna get into too much of that. Because this is mainly about building that engagement uh, with that customer. Because I want to take you guys from all the not interested you're getting, learning how to switch them around. What are some of the things you can do to switch it around? So we had talked a little bit about why you get this. You get this because people do not want to deal just with a random stranger. You said salespeople, right when you knock on the door, 
and uh, right when you knock on the door and somebody's like, is this a salesperson? Is this a religious person? Is this, and they open the door and you're like, hi, how's it going? My name is Paul Shakuri, and I'm actually here with XYZ. And what I'm doing in the neighborhood is up, I sound like a salesperson, right? The typical salesperson sounds like that, where they just talk and talk and talk. Why? Because they want to make money. They want to just get the, whatever the heck they have to offer into this guy's hand so I can get this and I can drive that. That's ultimately what sales is all about. And back in the day, if you want to call it, people would just typically sell like that. And uh, everybody, when they basically had so much more money to spend on random stuff, and it doesn't matter because tomorrow, anyway, there's certainty that I'm still going to have my job, and it's, I work for one company for 50, 60 years, and it doesn't matter because I'm going to retire, and everything's fine. These days, times have changed. People say, Paul, Paul, is door knocking dead? It's not. It's alive more than ever if you learn how to do it. Door knocking is not dead. What's, de what's, what's uh, dead is the old ways of selling door to door. The new ways of selling door to door is really understanding what your customers' hot buttons are with what you have to offer and can you patch, okay? Can you patch it with a solution? Can you present a solution to a problem they have? Now in this case, we're dealing with home automation and home security. Does everybody have the possibility, possible chance of heaven forbid being broken into, having a house fire, um, you know, a, a medical emergency inside of a house, also wanting to control their home, thermostats, door locks, uh, you know, all these cameras tapping in, kids, children, all this stuff. Do they want to? Do they want to be able to do that? Absolutely. People now more than ever like being in control with their smartphone of their life. People are slapping on these watches that will, that will uh, you know, let them know how many steps they took, how far they, people want to be more in control. And I'll tell you, you guys have the most, the, the most amazing products and services to actually present for the largest security company in the world. And that's what's the most amazing thing. When we look at how wonderful our brand is, and typically when we go out there, we think of all the people that told us not interested. And we focus on that. And we get pissed off why we got rejected, and why we got rejected, and why we got beat up, instead of focusing on why am I getting this? What do I need to overcome it? And are you absolutely certain? Because this is ultimately what it's gonna come down to. Are you absolutely certain that if you switched things around and learned from what other people are doing that are very successful doing this, that you can ultimately do the same? Or is there this random light that's shining on this person that's, that's making them successful and you not? Okay, it's not the case. All it is is they're doing something you're not that you need to figure out for you that once you unlock that, you ultimately get the results that they get, okay? And it comes back down to molding it, your own personality. And I've seen in this business many shady people that do very well, and to me, I will never shadow, I will never unethically sell, and I've shadowed them and I'm like, dude, I'll never be able to do this like you. And I never want to do this like you. Okay? That's them. Where do they end up ultimately? And I promise you I've seen it in jail. They actually do. Like forging contracts and all this crap that people do, they literally end up in jail. Yeah, I've seen it all, all too much. That's random, one in you know, a lot. Um, but they do that. So ultimately that's not, and I know every person, is, this isn't where you guys are going to be, but I'm just telling you, there's a different type of path that you can take all it requires is understanding the process. So, they're not interested. They could be watching a movie and you knocked on their door, they're not interested. Ultimately, you guys need to figure out why they're telling you not interested. And it's so simple, by agreeing with them and moving forward, okay? Because ultimately, if you agree with them, you want to be on that person's side. Knock, 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 you open the door, they open the door, you sound like a typical salesperson, if you're a salesperson and they're on the other side, remember it's sales guy or gal versus customer, right? This is what happens when we start off. It's sales guy versus customer. And that's not where we want to be. We want to be friend versus friend, okay? We want to be on their side. We want to be their friend. And the only way you're going to do it is if you're going to be ethical, okay, about it. Hey, how's it going? You the owner of the property here? Yeah, okay, cool. And by the way, I have even eliminated, hey, how's it going? Because those are triggers, and you need to think of all the social triggers that happen inside of a person's mind that makes you sound just like the last 10,000 people that knocked on their door that was a salesperson. Why? Because when they're coming to the door and they believe you're a typical salesperson, and they get the social triggers that's the exact same of what the last 
10,000 people did, ultimately you are salesperson, they block you off, they're not listening, and then they ultimately are not interested in a few matter. So, so ultimately that's where it is, okay? So I'm gonna show you a couple things. So, um, and typically what happens is, uh, you understand why you're getting this, they just ultimately don't wanna deal, deal with some random stranger at the door. Um, but uh, the majority of people take it very personally, really. When you're actually knocking and then you're getting rejected over and over and over again,
instead of beating yourself up and going from a 10 down to a 9 down to an 8, take yourself from literally a 9 move yourself up to a 10. How do you do that? Talk to yourself. Put music in your ears. Whatever you need to do between the doors to get yourself to that next level. What do I do? I get rejected. Who cares? You know what? That has nothing to do. The past does not equal the future. That door has nothing to do with my next door. It has nothing to do with my next door. Somebody rejected me. Let's just say this guy did. If I come and talk to this guy, he's not going to be like, wait a second. The last three people rejected you. Why would I want to do business with you? Okay? Act like you just sold 50, 70, 80 people on this block. Feel it. Live it. Lie to yourself. Literally, to bring your psych, psych yourself up. You think that's wrong? Tell any UFC fighter who's walking in, who's actually looking back and forth. And by the way, if you ever watch the UFC or any boxing fight before the pre-interviews, what does this guy say? What does this guy say? I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to kill him. I'm going to destroy him. I'm going to beat him. I'm not going to lose. I'm not going to lose. Does one person lose? At the end of the day, one person loses. Did they lie? No. But what they did was they peaked themselves, ultimately, so that they can peak their performance, which I'm going to get into with the potential to...
I say have because he's still in my heart, but unfortunately passed away. And uh, I do actually have a really big dog. Um, so that's cool. They are actually the best form of security. I agree with you. You're 100% right. Um, and my whole goal is, again, not just to sell you a system. Ultimately, you don't just want to sell them what you have to offer. Okay? I'm going through a lot of stuff. You guys are going to actually have a recording of this, so I want you guys to listen closely, rewind. But you guys ultimately are going to have a lot of ammo you can use with your customer. Ultimately, what you want to do is you want to build that value inside the customer's head, inside the customer's property, of knowing exactly what your system can do for them so that they can ultimately make the decision on saying, you know what, I want that. Your goal is not to sell them. Your goal is to show them, guide them into what your system, what you have to offer can do for that person. And what it can do for this person will be different than what it can do for this person, than that person, than this person, than this person, than this person, than this person. okay? There's a big difference there. It sounds the same, I want to sell this person, versus I want to just figure out if what I have to offer can ultimately benefit this person. So, um, Renzo, let me show you for example, okay? Uh, and ultimately my goal is I promise you on everything and I really do mean this. My goal is not to sell you what I have to offer. What my goal really is to do is to figure out for you if this is something you can benefit from. And if you can actually see this as something you want to benefit, you can benefit from, then ultimately you're going to decide whether you want it or not. Let the system sell them, not you. So let me show you first of all on your front door here what this system does, okay? Because again, if this is something that you're like, eh, I don't quite care about, then all the best, I'm moving forward. And as such, I mean, maybe later on down the road it's something you are, yeah, my business card, you can call me back. What am I doing? I'm transitioning into doing an in-house presentation. When you're in a home, whatever you sell, you have to do a presentation, a powerful presentation. Powerful. The key word is a powerful presentation. What does that mean? We talked about your features. You also have to understand how to bring out what the customer, how the customers can benefit from those features. Instead of just saying, oh, you got a door sensor? Well, how do I benefit from a door sensor? So number one, my door sensor is an actual feature. But how can you benefit from a door sensor? So what we do is we put a door, magnetic door contact on your door frame. We put a magnetic door contact on your door. Now what happens is somebody forces this open. Let me tell you this, Renzo, say you're actually at work. Okay? And uh, by the way, do you work, Renzo? Cool. So you work, and uh, you go to work, and by the way, I don't need to know what times, so don't worry, you can trust me. I'm not asking you those crazy, creepy questions. But say you go to work, okay? And now, this house which we're standing in right now, this house which we're standing in right now, uh, as you can see, has windows, has doors. Someone were to break into this house. And let me give you just one scenario, okay? Before I even get into that, let me ask you this question, and this is something that everybody should always ask. Renzo, are you open to the possibility? I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm not saying it's not, but I'm asking you this one question. Are you open to the possibility that this house can get broken into? Yes or no? Be honest. You are. Okay. I'm open to the possibility that this house can be. Why? Crime's random. People are sick. Not everybody, but unfortunately there are people who are sick and they do break into properties. Crime is random. So. Are you willing to chance and are you comfortable that what we have to offer would actually, you know, really protect you from that possibility of happening? And if that possibility happened, what would it ultimately mean to you, your family, your kids, you know, your assets, everything you work, by the way, if you don't already know, your home is your largest asset, unless you have some big Lamborghini or some gangster Lamborghini sitting out in your, uh, in your, your driveway, uh, sorry, or even in your garage, you gotta take me for a ride. Any Lamborghini in there, brother? There's not yet, right? Because you're gonna eventually get one. I'll break out a joke. Not just me, it's true. I'll be like, dude, seriously. And I said that, by the way, one guy actually had a Lamborghini, which I sold. Uh, really, it was like, and it was worth more than his house. That's why I say that. I'm like, I'll tell you a true story, man. Uh, the guy's house at the time is not the best of neighborhoods. His house was worth something like 80,000. His Lamborghini was worth 100 and something. It was actually worth more. So I typically say your house is your most largest asset. I put a but clause in there because I actually ran into that scenario. But aside from that, Renzo, back to this. So we're gonna put a door contact over here. Now if somebody were to do this, like pry this open, do this, do that, what's gonna happen is that sensor is gonna split and if it splits, it's gonna send a signal to the keypad, which by the way, we'll put right here. Okay? Well, because you have a beautiful painting, we're going to enter it and put it right here. Of, of course, the technician will let you know, and I'll go into it. But if it does, see how that works? The technician, I mean, the, the burglar breaks in, this goes there, a loud siren goes off, 
havoc and chaos is happening inside this house. Police are showing up, burglars running. This is how the system works. I'm running through it, but that's basically another training. But see, you bring it to life. When you bring yourself to life, when you bring, when you feed a plant water, uh, uh, oxygen, uh, sorry, uh, carbon dioxide, uh, when you feed it sunlight, it grows, right? You gotta grow yourself, you gotta expand your mind, you gotta expand your, your knowledge, your wisdom on this, the products and services, and when you do, it comes to life to the customer, and when you're passionate ultimately about what you're selling, and you're bringing it out to them, you'll find a lot more people interested as opposed to not interested in what you have to offer, I promise you, okay? So stand strong, don't be a pushover, and uh, how you turn them around, we talked about that. Create curiosity. I created curiosity by, you know, have you, are you familiar or have you, do you know anything about any of these sensors over here or how this touch screen and keypad works? What did I do? I created curiosity with him in one of two ways. Everybody wants to know what they don't know. Uh, everybody wants to know, okay, what they don't know. So if it's what they're curious about. So they're curious about knowing about something that they don't know, then now I got their curiosity, all I gotta do is bring the answer to them. They're listening, they're engaging. People want to hear and listen, want an answer about what they don't know. So if I'm talking about this keypad over here in this panel, he's looking at it, he's like, oh, what is that? What is he's asking questions, he's curious, okay? He wants to know, whether it's small, big, it doesn't matter. He wants to know, and now that he wants to know, he's gonna be listening to what I have to say. That's a training of its own, but people actually want to, uh, uh, to, to know. So creating curiosity is definitely something that's very important you guys learn how to. Again, I have a whole training course on creating curiosity. Um, and do a powerful presentation. And ultimately, I wanna talk about this, which is, again, I'm telling you, so important uh, in your life, and what I'm about to train you right now and teach you on. Uh, is, and, and it's very important to your success as a door knocker. It's called belief potential result. Number one, how certain are you, okay, how certain are you that this career, this job, is ultimately going to get you to where you want to be next? What do you want to do next? Perhaps you want to grow big. Like for me, I thought I wanted to import. This is my story. I thought I wanted to make a lot of money with this so I can import products and services from China, for example, and resell them. So I need to make a lot of money from this to do that. That was ultimately where I started, one of my major goals. However, when I actually furthered in and I noticed that there's a lot of money to be made in this, I love it and enjoyed it, it switched to how big of offices can I grow? How exciting, how excited can I get people to ultimately change their own lives, but also impact other people as well? Grow offices, grow sales forces, expand, continue, growth. Growth to me is like the most amazing thing in life. Watching your kids grow, watching a tree grow, watching a plant grow, like watching anything grow in a positive way, okay? So, how much do you believe that this, ultimately, this job is gonna get you to where you wanna be next, okay? No matter what it is. How much belief, you on a level from one to 10, one being the least, 10 being the most. How ultimately, uh, how much belief do you have? For me, it was a 10 when I first started off, okay? I knew with 100% certainty that if I learned this, if I mastered it, that I would get and achieve and accomplish what I wanted, where I wanted to go, which was importing and making money from it because there's a lot of money to be made. So if I believe at a 10 that I'm going to be extremely successful at this, how much of my potential am I gonna put into something, into it? If I believe, you know, 100%, I'm like, yeah, if I just follow and shadow and do my what I need to do, I'm gonna become successful at it. What do you think from a level from one to 10, where do you think I'd be at as of how much potential? Am I gonna put a lot of energy into it or very little if I believe this is 100% the answer? 10. 10, of course, I'm gonna give it my all. Now, because I'm giving my all, Everybody knows. Who in here has cleaned their house and they gave it a three or a two or a one? It's like, oh, I don't feel like doing this. How many times have you listened to music and got all pumped up and excited to clean your house? You did nothing but give your maximum potential of doing this, moving fast, getting it done in a certain amount of time. You know the difference. I've seen everybody, like, heck yeah, right? The more potential, the more of your potential you put into something, the better of a result you're gonna get. It's direct, you can fight it all you want, you can take a look at it as a, a daily, a weekly, a monthly, whatever it is, the, t the time frame you're, you're working with, the more you actually put of your potential, the better your result's gonna be. So if you have believe at a 10 that this is the job for you that's gonna ultimately get you, you're gonna put yourself at a peak high performance of a 10, performing every single day, and then ultimately, what is it gonna get you? That result. 
your result, which is estimated one sale a day minimum to start. Right? That's where you all, okay? So if you ultimately believe with 100% certainty that this is the job for you, you're ultimately going to give your all, put a 10 into it. The more you put into it, the better chances of your actual result, which is getting your sale. Okay? So you actually get that result. Now, what happens if the opposite? So let's just say your belief system is cut in half, fine. What does a person with a belief system of five sound like, hear like, look like? Well, you know what? I see this door knocking stuff. I see, I wonder if this is going to work. I wonder if that guy at the front of the room is just going to be selling me in and all these other people are just, you know, nobody's doing this and that. And I wonder if I, well, you know what? Well, I'm going to try it out. I'm not going to be a quit. I'm not going to just give up before I try it out. Okay? That's somebody whose belief system is not a 10. That's somebody whose belief system is, I don't believe in myself that I can do it. I don't believe in the company that can do it. So how much of your potential? So I'm going out. I'm going to try this out. Knock, knock, knock. Let me see if they, hey, how's it going? You're the owner. How much of your potential are you giving in? Five. Okay? If you ultimately, to start, needed to give yourself and put yourself at a 10 to generate an account, but you're giving yourself and you're a 5, okay, if you're, if you're at that level where you're a 5, do you think your result, you're going to actually even accomplish getting a sale? It's more likely not going to. It's all started from what you can control, your belief. Do your research. How many people want an agency system? Just so you know, it's 6.6 .6 million people just in North America alone currently have a security system. How many people are constantly getting security systems in Canada? How many people that you see, businesses, homeowners, actually have systems? A lot. Does that mean there's a demand for it? Why would somebody want one of these? Would you put one of these things in if money was not an issue? You have to ask yourself that. If you ultimately believe now, and you build that belief up, and again, that's another training of its own. I'm really telling you, there's trainings for everything, but that's a training of itself. But if you ultimately, believe that with 100% certainty today that you're going to go out and get a deal, you're going to start off with maximizing at a maximum potential of, uh, your, of your potential to get that account. But what happens to the average person? This is scary. I believe with 100% certainty, I feel great. I worked out this morning. I had my shake. I'm going to look like Kevin soon, so <laughs> good luck. Good luck. Uh, you know, I feel great. I'm going to do it. And hey, I'll call myself on it. How many times have I told myself that? throughout my life. I wanted to, you know, look like him in the gym, that aspect of my life. And I don't. I never pushed myself that much. My belief system, I go back to these teachings. I'm not perfect, okay? Just seem to master the door-to-door -door side of it and business side of it. But um, as of with this in my life in the gym, I'm not at a 10 still, I believe. I'm high up there. And as such, I'm not massively overweight or out of shape because I still keep, in, keep myself, you know, going and, you know, half doing stuff to get by. And, you know, anyway, aside from that, I start myself off at a 10, let's just say, in this job. Knock on that first door, and then all of a sudden you get rejected. Nobody's home, not the homeowner, blah, blah, blah. What happens is throughout the day, there's different time frames. As you don't get a deal, what happens to your belief on whether or not you're going to get a sale today? It tends to go from a 10 down to a 9, down to an 8. So whereas now in the following doors, and track yourself on this, what do you start doing? You start putting less of your potential out there. And think about it. As time goes on throughout the day, and you're starting to put a little bit less of your potential on each and every door, are your odds going up of getting a sale or going down? Down, absolutely. Because you're using less of your potential because you did not control the first thing that you can control, which is your belief. People say, well, I can con control my potential by just pushing harder. Well, you end up getting into burnout mode if you just 100% peak yourself at 100% without remembering back to, hey, I'm fully confident that I can do this. This is why I even need to push myself to the fullest, okay? So understand that. Set your belief at an all-time high, every single door, all the time that you believe 100% this is the door I'm going to get my sale on. You don't? Next door. Rush to it because rush to the next door. Why would you rush to the next door? Because you know the next door is a deal. It's 100%. So they didn't answer the door. They rejected you. Oh, I guess I was wrong. Something happened. Who cares? Next door is 100%. Oh, squirrel, next door. Right? The next door is always your actual account. The, well, the one you're talking to, but if you got rejected and something happened, brush it aside. Past is not equal to future. Next door is 100%. Now, when you start installing and drilling that inside your mind, that thought is just being drilled. This is the door. Why would it not be the door? Tell me why it would not be the door. Knock on this door. Why would you knock on it if you don't believe that this person is going to get what you have to offer? Because it's a thing, a four-letter word called hope. 
Majority of people fall into, I hope I'm going to get this. And hope means your belief is not at a 9 or a 10 or a 10 or 11 or a 12. Your belief is not there. It's a hope. So your potential, your belief, your results. As you start going down with your beliefs, so you go down from a 10 to an 8, your potential goes down to an 8, your result goes down from, let's just say, your 10 to a whatever down, and then it keeps, then what happens is when you start getting a worse of a result, you don't get a sale, then what do you think happens to your belief? I now believe, since I didn't get a deal last door, I didn't get a deal last door, my belief system starts installing inside my head that I believe I'm not going to get a deal. So if I believe I'm not going to get a deal on here, what am I going to do different at this door? How much energy am I use at this door? Less. And it keeps going down, so ultimately, your result, you come back without a sale. If you want to get one sale a day, focus and concentrate on your belief system. Know the general details of what I talked about. You may not understand and get everything I said, okay? Trust me, over time, you get it. But if you can go out today, which I know and I believe you guys can, and 100% believe in every single door that this is the person that's gonna get, that you're going to get the sale on, you will ultimately come with one to three sales today. It's the, it literally is, and the sad part is, majority of people will not trust what I'm saying right now. They're going to say, okay, that sounds good. They'll knock and be like, oh, I was all uh, hype talk and all that. They go out there and they're like, yeah, but he's not, but I, and then excuses kick in. Yeah, but I don't know, I'm not a good communicator like him, or I'm not a this and that bull crap like him. And whatever that is, that's, again, your belief going like this. It's not true. I promise you, I have anybody, any walk of life, any shape, any size, any gender, any whatever, succeed at this. When I train them to actually control their beliefs at every single door and push themselves to give it their potential on every single door, you get an account. And it's not whether or not you're going to get a sale today. It's whether or not, what are you going to do to get that sale within the next five minutes, the next 10 minutes, the next hour maximum, the next 30 minutes. How quick am I going to do uh, take to actually get that sale, that account? Okay? It's all about that. So here's your action plan. Stop getting frustrated, okay? You get rejected at that door, who gives a crap? There's eight million other doors. Somebody talked to, 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 to somebody in this neighborhood, I've done it all over and over again, even 10 minutes after a salesperson just walked by someone and talked to somebody and still closed them and sold them. Doesn't matter, stop getting frustrated with yourself. Frustration is a kind of good thing because you know there's an answer, right? You haven't quit. Frustration means, you know what? Um, I'm so fr I know there's an answer, I know there's a solution, I know there's, I can get a result, but I'm just not there yet, I'm bashing myself. So it's a good thing, but stop beating yourself up from it, okay? Build strength. How are you going to build strength? Just like a muscle. you got to work it. you got to work it. Just like a muscle, your mental muscle. You go down from a 10 to a 9, it's not the end of the world. you got to identify that. Your belief system went down. Bring it back up to a 10. Pump yourself up. Listen to music. So think about that, that whatever your goals are, what it is you want to accomplish, and go after it. And so have a goal. Have a yearly goal especially. How many accounts are you going to generate by your end? How many accounts are you going to generate? And focus on breaking it down when you get home tonight, or even on if somebody else is driving. Focus on how many accounts that means you ultimately have to get every single week. And do whatever it takes to get yourself that's legal and ethically to actually get yourself to accomplishing those. Because ultimately, if you get that, this is what your, the reward's going to be. Okay? And in the beginning, sacrifice. I promise you. Sacrifice. Okay? I slept on an air mattress and had no vehicle and nothing to my name for at least a year and a half. I promise you. And I moved my way into that, into a nice 4,000 square foot house and in my own BMW 7 Series, literally at the age of 24. And I promise you guys, I'm nothing special and I don't know this. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't pick up quick, but the main thing that I do have is I don't quick and I push forward. And because I push forward and I'm, I'm a very analytical person on why people are telling me what they're doing and saying and how can I overcome it, that's all you got to do. Get your belief system up there. Go after it. Develop yourself. Every single day, you're going to get stronger. Just because you're not the top salesperson now, it just means you're just not the top salesperson yet. Be that person. Don't go after the next person in line. Aim for the top. Go to the top and be the top and stay there. And you guys all have a software, by the way, that tracks that progress. You should be logging in every day. And if somebody's at, like, you know, two for the... The, the month, you need to say, yeah, that's like pathetic. I need to be at 10 for the week. I need to be at 10 for the month. I'm oh, sorry, 10 for the day. Like, get your mindset like that. And that's what ultimately is going to accomplish your goals. Okay? Ask for help. Successful people always ask for help. Ask Google for help. Ask YouTube for help. Ask me for help. Ask Kevin for help. Text, message, ask somebody for help. Whatever it is you're struggling with, find it. Okay? Find the answers. And lastly, track your progress. 
because you may be at a point where you're at one sale a week now. You may be at a point where you're at one deal a week now. You may be at a point where you're at five deals a week now. Track your progress, where you're at. If you're at one sale a week, if you go from one sale a week to two sales a week consistently, what percentage increase is that? That's huge. So now you need to get, exactly, now you need to get yourself to four accounts a week. Think about back to when you were at one a week, and now you're at four a week. When you calculate the percentage, you're doing something different. You can always raise the bar, but look at the percentage change. And when you focus on percentage change, it's ultimately endless on how much more you can actually accomplish based on now that I see that I've increased by 100, 200, 300% my sales. I know this is working, I'm on track, and now all I gotta do is get the proper education to make sure that I continue, whether you educate yourself, whether one of us educates you, to actually continue to take yourself to that next level. Because ultimately, you set your goals, you know why you did this, you know why you started it, and when you know why you started it and why, what it's gonna ultimately mean to accomplish these goals, you're gonna ultimately have exactly what it is you want. So that concludes it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Paul. Uh, so thank, thank you, Paul Shuri. Thank you, guys. Questions, any questions that you guys may have? Yes? Uh, a moment ago, you were talking about, uh, for the reason, it's important to create confusion. Is that to create curiosity? That's right. Okay. That's right. So it's interrupting their thought pattern, right? So basically, somebody's like, you're a door knocker, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they basically will say, yeah, I'm just not interested. OK, so I need to basically create some confusion, some habit to shake them off of that thought. Um, absolutely. Yeah, no, I totally understand. I'm actually headed up the street here. Um, but what exactly are you interested in? Uh, whatever you're selling. Oh, I wasn't selling anything. Ooh, he's not selling anything. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Because remember, my goal, and truly, I'm not here to sell him. I'm actually here to present him what we have to offer. If he wants to buy it, he's selling himself. So ultimately, I'm like, oh, no, absolutely. I'm not here to sell anything. Sorry, what? Uh, in that case, uh, oh, oh, you thought I was just here to randomly sell you something? Or, yeah, exactly. So, so what is it you're doing? Oh, I got curiosity. I wanted to ask you a question, okay? Question-based selling is the best way to sell. You ask a question. What did I do the first thing I did? I asked him, oh, what is it you're not interested in? I asked him a question. What does he do? He responds. What is it you're, you're interested in? He can't just be like, Right? He's got to respond. So, absolutely. That's why to shake them up, uh, shake things up, stir things up, buy me some time so I can go in. But if it's going off track where, and you'll get this sometimes, oh, sorry, what exactly are you interested in? Dude, whatever the F you're selling or doing, oh, no, I'm not, I don't care what you're doing. Dude, I don't got time. I'm freaking busy. I got the kids. All right, cool. Have a great day. I'll move forward. Depends on the level. And you get better as you feel them out. Don't waste your time. Remember I said have some self-respect? Don't let people disrespect you. Dude, you're having a bad day, great. Don't push it on me. See you later. Right? In the back of your head. All right, cool. See ya. Not even. And I don't say thank you, by the way. People who reject me, I don't say thank you. Why am I thanking them for rejecting me? It's not rude. Like, all right, cool. See ya. That's it. Move forward. I'm, I'm not thanking them. Because when you think about it, if you thank them for rejecting you, what is that installing subconsciously in your mind? That you're belittled, that you're getting rejected, that you're getting, well, thank you for rejecting me. No. Dang it. You beat me. Dude, you, you, you crushed me. I'm not going to thank you for doing that. The back of my head. I don't say it, but I'm oh, Logan, thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yes. My, like when I knock the doors, my uh, my thinking is that like when I knock the doors, like, like, I want to sell. Yep. So it's hard for me to create a with customer. It's probably the minimum of uh, trust. Yep. It's hard to build trust with the people who wait two minutes. Yep. So how do you Okay, so your focus is you want to sell. Yep. You definitely have to shift that. How are we going to do that? So what you focus on is definitely what you get. So if you're focusing on selling them, remember, we want to sound not like a salesperson. So you're focusing on selling them, what are you going to sound like? A salesperson. So we need to shift you from thinking about uh, selling them, we need to work on the, the backstop, what you do at home, to actually like with your goals, but more importantly, not just thinking about selling them, think about ultimately caring, if you can, you got to ultimately dig within you, caring about if somebody broke into that property, that do you care truthfully that the idiot leaves a property and a burglar obviously is his left? And if you can't ultimately care about that homeowner who literally is going to have this awesome panel, touch screen, his life is going to be better, and you don't focus on that, you're going to only be focusing on the sale and always sound like a salesperson. So you need to ultimately believe truthfully within you. You need to sell yourself. This goes back into if I, your mom's house, your dad's house, your sister's house, somebody who has kids, 
If they put this unit inside their property, what would it mean to them? What if my sister was home alone and the kids were there and some creep breaks in? Think of this scenario, okay? I want to present that to another person. So, hey, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, I understand you're not interested. Let me just tell you really quick one big thing that I've noticed from our units, our systems of what it, what it actually can do. And that way, when you're ready, if you ever are or you want something like that, just give us a call. By the way, here's my card. And let me show you this. Um, I, I know, like, for example, my sister, she has her kids. And what happens is when, and then I go into it. So if she were home alone, what would happen? And I promise you, what happens is they get engaged if you do it right. And they're like, oh, so, so yeah, but what if somebody were to, so how do your door, and they're curious now. So how do your door contacts work? So I don't get it. So how does it connect to you? Because now they're interested. They're like, oh, wait a second. I have a daughter. She's at home. Uh, you know, or I have a wife. She's at home. Yeah, okay, cool. But wait, I've always, I, and, and they, they typically have thought of security. So they want, they, they have questions in their mind that they want to answer. Let me just get questions answered from this guy since he's here. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and by the way, okay, so yeah, I get that. But hold on. So uh, this keypad, and is that like, so what, what do you guys typically charge them like that? Since some of these guys are right here, I might as well let them talk to him and he's gone further. I might as well get information. You're sucking them in and you're drawing them in, okay, by switching it up. You need to focus more on the actual unit, what it can do for somebody, and bring it to life. Don't focus on the sales. Why? Because if you ultimately bring out to somebody what the system can do, sales by default is the actual reward that comes out of it. The sales will come, I promise you, if you just focus on showing them what it can do. If somebody says, yeah, I'll take what you have to offer based on what it can do, the sale is ultimately in your hands. But if you're focusing on the sale, you're pushing, pushing, pushing too hard. And pushy salespeople don't get sales anymore. It doesn't work. That's the old ways. That's what we were talking about. Instead, bring the value out of the product. I understand you're not interested. Are you even not interested in a loud siren if you just put a siren that would go crazy inside your house? Oh, you guys can do stuff like that? Well, I'm just curious if you'd be interested in that. You know, going into the, again, your features and benefits. We focus more on that and how to present it. We'll, we'll, we'll work on it over time, too. So yes. I had a case where a customer was like, I can't afford it. Yeah. So, well, the beautiful thing is uh, actually it's super affordable. I mean, cars are kind of affordable. It's uh, not still about a dollar a day. And I was like, yeah, but it adds up. And I'm just like, let me ask you a question. Does the idea make sense to you? Do you like the idea? At all? He's like, yeah, yeah, I love the idea. You know, I get it. It's free. It's not free. Yeah. And then what, 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 how would you overcome that? Because at that point, I was like, like, I don't know what to say. Yeah, absolutely. So right now, this, this is your issue that, on that account. Price outweighs the value. You ask them, and again, I had to have uh, seen what the person, how they reacted. You ask them whether or not they can they, they can see themselves benefiting from this. They said, yeah, but what level? How, how, how much value did they see? How clear were you? How much of the, were you in the house, by the way? Did you do an in-house presentation or outside? Uh, outside. Okay, so when you're outside, you're not pointing inside the house and all that. So you set the bar low on your value. There was not enough value on the system that's built. So what could you have done to fix this? Perfect. I, I, so maybe I could have asked another question. On a scale of one to ten, how, how much do you see yourself benefiting from this? Sure. And do they make, yep, yeah, yeah, that, that is. But what I would personally do is ask them, okay, so let me just ask you a question. If, for example, and like later on down the road when you perhaps your, your finances were better, um, that you were able to uh, go out, and by the way, the reason why I say this is 99% of the people tell you they don't have the money for it, they do. They really do. And I've learned this because I've always asked people this question, which I, this isn't something that you ask right away, but let me ask you this. How much is your mortgage? Uh, 1500 No, no, no. Give me more detail, please. Uh, okay, $1,500, $1,563. Okay, grab a calculator and say, and add, let's just say, 50 bucks a month, whatever your, your, your service is that you're charging. So if your mortgage went up to 1602, whatever it is, uh, and to 35 cents, would you literally, by default, be have to pack up your, and actually leave the, you, you know what I mean, would you default on your house, your mortgage here? Well, no, of course, but I mean, hey, money's money, and I'm, no, no, I totally understand. But I'm just, my, my, my curious question to find out is, would they really, would it really put them in bankruptcy? if they, their, their, the amount of money went up by like 50 bucks. I understand money's tight and all that, I'm not saying no, but I'm just curious if that's the case, because that, if they said yes, where it's 100% gonna take food off your table, that's the only person, I'll tell you, if you still see people going to the hockey games, the football games, driving around, ice creams, so all busy, people have money. It's just whether or not they're gonna justify buying what you have to offer, okay? So, yeah, 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 but the way he made it sound was literally like, there's, like, I would only get this place, like, 
Sure, sure. Because exactly, why? Why would he? He wouldn't want. There's no price. He wouldn't want to pay for something because all he sees is price and he sees no value. The value is very low. I'd take it because that. See, there's an equivalence that that person seen in in what you have to offer. They don't. The equivalence of of uh, he's attaching your product to worth nothing. It's not worth a monetary value. There's not much value that, that you built up. So you need to work better on bringing the value, driving the message, delivering exactly what that system can do for that person, how they can benefit from that, that, that unit inside the property. So he ultimately didn't know and asked him a question. So if somebody broke in from your back door with our system, tell me exactly the details on how it would work inside here. I don't know, would you, uh, uh, wouldn't there, would, uh, would, you, would a siren go off? Would it be loud? Or, see, he doesn't know. He's not confident. He's not comfortable. You've got to ultimately deliver a powerful presentation so that it makes sense. It's a training of its own, but makes sense. It's clear. And as a matter of fact, there's a guy in the, I believe in, in uh, Australia, who like a couple days ago, I told him this, correct those two things. Be clear and have it make sense to them, okay? And present your product and ask them the question. And I swear to you, the next day he actually got a deal. No, what am I saying? In the United States, it was an actual uh, uh, an alarm, home automation itself. Anyway, um, but he, he showed me. I showed him that, and like
couple of things. That's a very good thing to bring up. A couple of things you need to tweak and find out. You need to dig. Don't just settle with, ah, we just need more time. Perfect. I understand that, and you're going to get as much time as you want. But please, uh, what would ultimately, let's just say time pass, what are you going to, within that time period, what exactly, what research are you trying to, since I'm here, I can possibly solve it and go into it from there. Cool. Oh, uh, yes? Uh, do you ever ask their name? their name, probably within the, the first five minutes or three minutes. So I'll say, hey, you the owner here? Okay, we're actually blah, 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 da, 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 da. Then as I'm like after maybe like 30 seconds to a minute to a couple, even within a minute, a uh, minute and a half, maybe two minutes, um, just thinking how long it's talking. Then I'll go, oh, by the way, I totally forgot. Sorry, what, what was your name? Redzo. Redzo. Nice to meet you. I'm Paul. So within my first two minutes, I'd have to say, I would do that. Yeah. <laughs> Pick uh, the pencil, either the, I have a um, about, uh, I, 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 anyways, yeah, exactly. No, no, this is about something that, uh, another lesson, but anyway, it's going to take too long. Okay, uh, any other questions? Awesome, let's have a killer day. Let's set some goals. Uh, there's one, two, three.